I guess I'm on. Am I on? All right, greetings, friends and colleagues. We're gonna go through this anyway. It's Sean Elvis here. My first live video, it says live up there. I've never done this, so I guess I'm on. Um, is this working? <laughs> I don't even know if this is working. I got my phone sideways. There we go. All right, we're just gonna leave it like that. Sorry, all right, so my first ever live broadcast, sorry for the technical difficulties. Uh, my first ever Bible study. It's not really gonna be a Bible study, it's more gonna be a sermon, and I'm gonna try to keep it um, as fast as possible because I got kind of zealous writing it. But anyway, it's gonna be based on Psalms chapter 23, that's going to be my primary focus, and I am using the King James Bible. So, the reason I'm doing that is because it's the best Bible in English. So, if you speak English, you know, as it's translated, the King James Bible is directly translated from the Hebrew and Greek manuscripts. So, you know, my goal today is hopefully to encourage you, you know, if, if, you're, not a, if you're not a believer... If you don't believe the Bible, um, I hope to encourage you to become a believer. And and if you are, you know, already a believer, I hope to maybe strengthen your faith. You know, this is not going to be an in-depth um, study of the Bible. I'm just going to teach a few things that I learned, and hopefully, we can apply these lessons to our lives. Um, anyway, I'm going to begin because I don't want this to be too long. Uh, I'm going to start off in the book of Exodus, chapter three. So if you open up your Bible, it's the second chapter in the Bible, right after Genesis. Exodus. If you hit Leviticus or Numbers, Deuteronomy, you went too far. Um, so we're going to start in uh, Exodus chapter 3, uh, verses 10 through 12. And just a quick recap, you know, so you can get a context of, of what's going on here is, uh, you know, um, Joseph died and the Israelites went into bondage in Egypt. And the Egyptian Pharaoh was afraid the Israelites would overpower them. So, you know, he ordered all the children to be killed. And Moses' parents then sent Moses down the river into a basket to save him. And then one of Pharaoh's daughters, you know, they found Moses and they adopted him. Moses grew up an Egyptian. And eventually he wanted to free the Israelites, right? So then God appeared to him in a burning bush. And, you know, and, and this is God speaking to him right here. In, uh, uh, so we're in Exodus chapter 3, verses 10. The Bible says, Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. And he said, Certainly I will be with thee, and this shall be a token unto thee. When thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, ye shall serve God upon this mountain. So, you see in verse 10, it says, Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, and thou mayest bring forth the people of the children out of Egypt. And Moses said unto God, Who am I, that I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? In verse 11. Now, the reason I opened up and started with this passage is because, you know, um, I'm, you know I'm not a Bible expert. I'm not a pastor, you know, I'm just somebody who reads the Bible and is trying to serve God, you know. So I've been reading the Bible for about seven years now, and I've grown a lot, you know, in both knowledge and wisdom. And, I, and I'm learning how to preach what I've learned. So, you know, bear with me, please, while, while, I'm, while I'm still learning. Um, that being said, you know, how, you know, hopefully we can learn something together today. You see, Moses didn't think um, he was anything special. Right. He, he, he even questioned God in verse 11. He said, who am I that I should go into Pharaoh? Right. So, you know, oftentimes we think that we have screwed up in our past, you know, and, and we aren't worthy to serve God anymore. You know, we, we may be ashamed of what we did in the past. We may think that, you know, there's got to be someone better for this job. Somebody else can serve the Lord. Right. You know, skip over in your Bible to uh Exodus chapter 4, it's the next chapter, and we're going to go to verse number 10. Verse number 10 says, And Moses said unto the Lord, O oh, my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither here, neither herefore, nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant. 
but I am slow of speech and of a slow tongue. You know, so, you know, Moses didn't have any confidence in himself, you know, but he obeyed the Lord anyway. You know, the Lord guided him, the Lord helped him, and eventually he was able to lead the Israelites out of Egypt. Um, you know, my sermon today is going to be based on, you know, Psalms 23, you know, so uh, I don't really have a title for this sermon. Um, it's kind of just, just a Bible study. So here we go. Um, flip over to uh, Psalms chapter 23 and we'll read this. And, you know, Psalms 23 is, is a famous, it's a famous passage. I've heard it read at funerals a lot. And, you know, when people are you know, going through trials and, and depression and things like that. But anyway, Psalms chapter 23 says, and I'm just going to read it first and then we'll go through the study. It says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And I just want to say a quick prayer. Um, dear God, you know, please bless this message today. Um, please give me the courage to speak your word, not my words, and and give the listeners the ears to hear. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Okay, so you know, um, there's a lot of things uh, that I want. You know, the, the first verse in the Bible says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Right? But, you know, so there's a lot of things in my life that I want, whether they be good or bad. Right? Some things that I want are good. You know, like a drink of water right here is a good thing. Some things are bad, you know, some people have different vices like smoking or drinking alcohol, um, things like that, and, you know, but so there's a lot of things that, you know, I, I want that are that are good for me. And there's a lot of things that I, I don't want that are bad for me. You know, if the Bible says, you know, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, you know, what does that really mean? Now, you don't have to turn there, but Matthew chapter 22 in verse 36, the Bible says, Master, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And Jesus uh, answered him and said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. Right? You see, we're not supposed to want anything but the Lord. You know, a lot of the times we try to be our own shepherd. We try to tell ourselves what is good for us, like as if we know what's good for us. You know, we go after things that we want. You know, even, even the Bible tells us not to chase after those things. Those are bad things, but we still go after them, right? But the greatest commandment of all time, love the Lord your God with all your heart. You know, but how can you say that you love the Lord with all your heart if you don't trust Him? We need to trust God. We need to make God our Lord God needs to be our shepherd. You know, the Lord is my shepherd. You know, if you can't be your own shepherd. And I also want you to turn to John chapter 10 in the New Testament. We're going to flip over to John. John chapter 10. Uh, you know, because God's not just any shepherd. He's the only shepherd we ever need. John chapter 10 verses 11 says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. See, Jesus Christ is our good shepherd. Jesus says right here, I am the good shepherd. He protects us just like a shepherd protects their flock and God protects us. He leads us to green pastures. You know, don't you want to go to green pastures? I do. Or do you want to live in a pigsty, right? Would you rather walk beside still waters or would you rather walk beside a, a storming rage of tidal waves, you know? Jesus said the greatest commandment is to love God. This means we need to uh, make God our shepherd, you know? And how do we do that? John chapter 14, verse 15 says, If you love me, keep my commandments. Excuse me. But, you know, how can we say that we love God if we don't keep the commandments? How can we call uh, Jesus our shepherd if we don't follow his ways you know I know I used to call Jesus my shepherd but you know I didn't follow him 
right? Like when you go to work, if you were go to work and you would call yourself an employee, but what if you didn't show up to work? You know, what if you didn't do your job at work? I want you to turn to uh, 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5. And, uh, and while you're turning there, I'll read uh, 1 John chapter 1. It says, If we say that we have fellowship with Him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. Right? You see, the Bible says if we say that He's our shepherd, but we don't do what He says, we're a liar. Right? And, you know, I'm not above this. I, I've done this before when I was younger. But, you know, as you see, the older I get, the more I realize how much I don't really know. You know, the famous philosopher Socrates said, the only thing that I know for sure is that I know nothing. You know, thou fool. What a fool he was, right? Um, and John chapter 5, you know, I told you to turn there. First John, excuse me, First John chapter 5, verses 20 says, And we know that the Son of God is come, and he hath given us an understanding that we may know him that is true, and we are in him that is true, even in his son, Jesus Christ. This, this is the true God and eternal life. You know, so we, we can know something, you know. You know, Socrates said, well, I know nothing. But, you know, the Bible says we know who our shepherd is. It's Jesus Christ. And we also know who the fool is, right? The fool says there is no God. Psalms chapter 53, verse 1. You know, and I also want to point you to another famous philosopher, Rene Descartes, who said, I think, therefore I am. You know, well, first of all, Jesus said in John chapter 8, Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. You know, before Rene Descartes thought anything, you know, God already was. You know, God still is and God always will be, right? So the point is, at least at least Rene Descartes knew that he existed. You know, we'll give him some credit for that. But, uh, but did he know who the good shepherd was, you know? See, we all know that we exist. We, th we can think, therefore, we know we exist. But we, do you know that you're a lost sheep without the shepherd? Without the shepherd, we're just a lost sheep. First Peter chapter 2, verse 25 says, for you, for ye were as sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and the bishop of your souls. And notice the capital words there in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 25, on bishop and shepherd. That's Jesus Christ. You know, Jesus Christ is our shepherd, and we are the lost sheep who have gone astray. You know, you see, what I what I hate about a lot of these philosophers like Socrates and 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 Descartes and all this, all these other guys. As you see, they, they don't even grasp the very basics, you know. You see, I, I they don't even know that, hey, there is a God. You know, you see, well, how do you know there's a God, Sean? <laughs> well, Psalms chapter 19, verse 1 says, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Romans chapter 1, verse 20, For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world, world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. You know, so nobody has an excuse to say that there is no God. You know, I know there's a God because I could see everything created around me. I, I, I was created. You know, I didn't create myself. And I know also that I haven't always made good decisions, right? I, I'm not talking about making a mistake, you know. I'm talking about uh, thinking that something's right. And then later on, after you do it, you figure out, oh, that wasn't right. Yeah, I shouldn't have did that, right? So e even ourselves, we can convince ourselves that something's right and it's not. I mean, have you ever, have you ever done that? Have you ever been so sure of yourself and you did something and then come to find out later, oh man, it's a big mistake. Big mistake. I was wrong. And then it's called, you have to eat crow after you go tell everybody or, you know, anyway, I'm guilty of that, right? You know, I've been guilty of going against God before, you know, thinking that I can outsmart God somehow, thinking that I can get away with it, that I was going to be able, you know, to get away with my sin. You know, have you ever done that? Have you ever knew uh, that something was wrong, but you did it anyways because you thought that you were slick? You know, you thought, yeah, nobody's going to know, you know, but God knows. God sees everything that we do. You know, you can never cheat God. 
And oh yeah, you know, I spent a long time running from the truth, thinking that, you know, I can get away with it, you know, convincing myself that I was getting away with it. You know what I mean? But God is long suffering. He's merciful. You know, look at uh, back to Psalms chapter 23, verse number six. He says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Mercy. God is merciful. He's merciful to all of us. He's merciful to me. I mean, you know, if God punished me every single time that I deserved it, I'd I'd be dead right now. I'd already be dead. You know, thank, thankful God gives me second chances and, and third chances and fourth and fifth and, and a bunch of chances to get it right. You know, Psalms 23 verse 4 says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You know, this life is a valley of darkness. You know, a lot of the times that we, you know, we don't know which way to go what decision to make. It's like we're in the dark. You know, our, our parents might tell us to do one thing. Somebody else tells us to do another thing. You know, somebody else tells us to do another thing. We don't know which way to go. You know, things and, and things go wrong in our life. And we get confused as, you know, why did this happen to me? Why am I going through this? You know, let me tell you a story, a quick story of my life. A true story. I lost my mother when I was nine years old, and, and this woke me up. It shook me like an earthquake. Death was staring at me right in the eyes, right in the face. You know, it, it was this very dark valley with the shadow of death staring right at me, right in my face, you know. So, you know, and what, and what did people say to me my whole life growing up? You know, oh, well, life's, life's a mess and then you die, right? So just live it up. Eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we die, Isaiah twenty two thirteen. 13. Well, I've eaten. With many of you listening to this message, I've eaten with you. I've drank with you. You know, I, you, have may, you may have even witnessed me lusting after things in the flesh of this life. You know, but let me tell you something. He restoreth my soul. He restoreth my soul. Verse 3. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for the, his name's sake. Amen. You know, I didn't lead myself out of righteousness. You know, I read the scriptures for myself. I kept the commandments that God told me to keep. And I made God my shepherd. And God led me to the still waters. He's the one who led me to greener pastures. Isaiah chapter 43 verse 1 says, But now, thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine when thou passest through the waters. I will be with thee through the rivers. They shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt be, thou shalt be burnt. Thou shalt not be burned. Excuse me. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Look, in, in this lifetime, things aren't always going to go as planned. We, we, we're going to... We're going to get ourselves in trouble. We're going to get ourselves in, 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 in stormy waters. And I, I've been there. I've done that. You know, I, I've, I've walked the road of depression. I've, 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 I've done the drugs. I've done the alcohol. You know, I've, I've looked at the pornography. I've, I've stolen things. I've lied to people. I've coveted after things. I've coveted after people that weren't mine. And you say, well, you sound like a bad person, Sean. What are you doing uh, preaching the Bible? You know, why would you do those things? Look, he, he, who, he who is without sin cast the first stone at me. Now, I didn't necessarily do all these things in my life because I'm a bad person, right? But because I didn't follow the shepherd, you know, why didn't I follow the shepherd? You know, because I didn't have faith. You know, a lot of the times we're too proud to admit that we don't know everything or we're too proud to admit that we made a mistake. Or we're so blinded by our sin um, and we're having such a great time, you know, living life for however we want to live, chasing whatever we want that we think, oh, I'm getting away with it. You know, <laughs> I could do I can do this my own way. And, you know, don't get me wrong. There is pleasure in sin for a season. He Hebrews chapter 11. But eventually it leads to death, you know, and sin will leave you empty inside. You know, believe me, I've done it, lived the life of sin, 
and it never satisfies me. It will never satisfy you. It'll never be enough alcohol. You're always going to want one more beer. Or it'll never be uh, enough enough of a, you know, wh whatever it is. You know, it'll always be, oh, I just need one more, one more. And then the next day comes and you say, oh, I'll quit tomorrow. You know, how many times have you heard people who smoke say, oh, yeah, I quit. I quit last week or, you know, I quit last year. And then, then, then they never quit, right? And I, and, you know, I look at other people and I might say to myself, Oh, well, they're doing such and such. And they look happy. They're getting away with it. So maybe it's okay for me to do that. Maybe it's okay. You know, as long as I, as long as, long as I put my smile on, my game face on, and I look happy, you know, may, maybe they'll believe it. Maybe I'll believe, maybe I can convince myself that I'm happy, you know, because let me tell you, people are great at faking it. You know, you, you watch the commercials on TV and everybody looks like, oh, I'm having a great time drinking all this alcohol. And, you know, you watch the videos on, on TV and you see guys um, having a great time with a bunch of women fornicating with all the harlots and whores. And, and oh, man, they look like they're having a great time. But let me tell you something, you know, you know where true peace comes from when we obey God. When we follow the good shepherd, you know, and he leads us to the green pastures, you know, and and, and when you follow the good shepherd and you truly obey God and you don't want to walk or you don't want to uh, stray away anymore. Um, that's when you get peace in your heart, you know, and don't make the mistake of thinking that I'm preaching a prosperity gospel. You know, I'm not saying that when you obey God, everything in your life is going to be peachy and rosy. No, 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 that's not what I'm saying. Men are men are still going to carry the burden of having to work by the sweat of our brow. And women are still going to carry the burden of being ruled by their husband and have the pain of, uh, of, of bearing children. That's just the price we all have to pay for uh, our sins and, and the sins of Adam and Eve. But when you decide to follow the good shepherd, Jesus Christ, your cup actually gets full. If you look in verse, uh, num uh, verse 5, it says, My cup runneth over. In fact, you know, it starts overflowing. And what you're going to have is a clean conscience, a pure heart, and peace that you could that's, that you have so much abundance you can just give it away to other people, even your enemies. And, and, and if you also look at the first part of verse 5, it says, Thou pre prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You know, so your enemies will be taken care of. God will take care of them. All the people who hate on you and say evil things against you, uh, they won't have anything to say, any words against you. And even if they do say something, it's not going to bother you because you have no fear. You have no fear. Why? Because, um, what does it say in verse 4? For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. God's rod and his staff will comfort you when you make him your shepherd. And what does that mean? You know, God's rod, his staff, that means that's the judgment of God. He's going to come down on people who do evil. If anybody does evil against you, rest assured, God's going to take care of it. You have nothing to fear. You have nothing to worry about. It doesn't mean nothing evil is going to happen to you. It just means God's going to handle it. Now, he may not handle it the way you want, but he's going to handle it, you know. So Jesus said in, in Matthew chapter 6, Take heed that ye do not your alms before men, to be seen of them. Otherwise, ye have no reward for your father, uh, you have no reward of your father, which is in heaven. Excuse me. You know, Jesus told us to do good things, to follow the good shepherd, even when nobody's watching, right? When it's just you alone by yourself, nobody else is watching, or you think nobody else is watching, God's watching. You know, some people try to claim that, oh, you know, you're, you're just following the good shepherd to get attention, right? You know, hey, everybody look at me. I'm following the good shepherd. I'm reading my Bible, right? And, um, but behind closed doors, are you reading your Bible? Are you praying when nobody else is watching? Are you really following the good shepherd? You know, a lot of people, they treat God like as if he's like a genie in the bottle, right? But, and, and they and they just pull out the genie when, whenever they need him and then put him back in the bottle when they don't, right? Or, you know, it, like when things are going bad in their life, they're like, hey, excuse me, genie, I need you right now. <laughs> and God's like, well, yeah, well, you need me now that you're going through a trial, but where were you, you know, when things were good? Let me ask you this, you know, you, you think I, 
You think I'm putting a show here on Facebook to make myself look good? You know, I've just confessed to you all the wicked, sinful things that I've done in my life. You think I'm trying to look good for you? You know, li listen, I do care about what you think of me, but only so far as you understand this message that I'm preaching. Because ultimately, the only opinion that I care about is the Good Shepherd, God. You know, that God's opinion is the only one um, I really care about, which, which reminds me of a famous, a famous quote from the famous philosopher Tupac. <laughs> Tupac said, only God can judge me. Well, let me tell you something. God already judged me. He, he said, Sean, you're a sinner. You need to repent. <laughs> and, you know, the longer I, I keep running from that, um, nah, God, I'm good. I, I don't need to repent. You know, I'm going to just keep gang banging. I'm going to keep chasing these hoes. I'm going to just keep stacking my money and doing whatever I want. All at the expense of what? You know, what did Jesus say in Mark chapter 8, verse 36? For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Jesus said, Sean, you know, who cares if you have everything that you want in this world? You know, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And Jesus said, hey, look, if you want to go after what you want, go for it. But what good is that going to do you when you die and go to hell? Without the good shepherd... That's what's going to happen. You're not going to have anybody to lead you to green pastures. You're not going to be able to ever dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Matthew chapter 5 verse 30. And if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off and cast it from thee. For it is, for it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. You know, if, if alcohol is holding you back from following the good shepherd... Cut it out. Whatever it is. Whatever's holding you back. What did Jesus say in Matthew chapter 19? Jesus said unto his disciples, Verily, verily, I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. You know, Jesus said, the more material things we have, the easier it is us for it to get to get distracted and not follow the shepherd. You know, material things and, and power can corrupt a man or a woman, you know, and, and we, we need to be careful that we shall not want anything but our Lord and our shepherd. Psalm 23 verse 1, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Remember the first commandment, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, thy soul, and thy mind. You know, so we need to humble ourselves. God has blessed us so much you know, we take things for granted and, and you never really know what you have until it's gone. So until your life is snatched away from you, you, you didn't know really how good you had it. So God blesses us with this life abundantly. And, and he wants us to spend eternity with him. But ultimately, it's our choice. We have to choose to follow the shepherd. We have to choose to make God our Lord and Savior, our shepherd, who we follow. You know, and, and, and if you don't take the first step, you're never going to go anywhere. Jesus said in, in John chapter 8, verse 24, I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins. For if you believe not that I am he, you shall die in your sins. So we have to accept Jesus Christ as our Savior first. That's the first step, right? We have to make God our shepherd first before, before we can follow him anywhere. Otherwise, we'll just follow after whatever we want. You know, listen, I... I didn't get to where I was today, you know, uh, preaching online, you know, with peace in my heart and confidence in the Lord and, and, and going to church and everything, you know, and I didn't, I didn't get here without first putting my faith in Jesus and admitting, yes, Lord, I'm a sinner. I, I'm a sheep who's gone astray. I need the shepherd to lead me, to guide me to the green pastures so I can dwell in the house of the Lord forever, you know, just like a little baby must first learn to crawl before he can walk. Jesus said you need to be born again. You know, just like a newborn baby. And then you could learn to, to crawl, and then you can learn to walk, and then you can learn to run and ride a bike. And, and before you knew it, you're doing all kinds of things. But the first step to having true peace is accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You got to swallow your pride. You know, I had to. And let me tell you something, you know, coming from a big family... Where I'm like sixth, seventh generation Colorado native, you know, an only child. 
I was proud. <laughs> I was proud. I did not want to. I did not want to admit that I. I didn't know where to go and what to do. I wanted to say, Nah, I'm good. You know, if, if I die, I'm all right. I don't. I don't need. I don't need no G. I don't need no nothing like that. And then you know, I had to drop down to my knees and say, God, I ain't. I ain't it. I ain't all that in the bag of chips, right? I'm good at faking it till I'm making it, right? <laughs> but the valley of death, the valley of the shadow of death is real. Proverbs chapter 9 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So until I feared God, I feared the judgment of God. I feared the, the, uh, the rod and the staff. I had to fear that before it comforted me because it was against me. I was the evil one. I was the sinner. I feared the truth being exposed. And then I had to stop in my tracks, get on my knees, swallow my pride and said, God, what do I have to do for you to forgive me? I'm, I'm tired of running. What do you want me to do? And you know what he said? Here's what he said. He said, you don't have to do anything, Sean. <laughs> I loved you before you loved me. All those sins that you committed, I already paid for them. For you, that's how much I love you. I sent my only son, Jesus, to die for you, to pay for your sins. All you have to do is believe. I'm your good shepherd. You trust me? Do you trust me? Do you trust me? I said, yes, God, I trust you. And he said, then feed my sheep. You know, how could I feed anybody if I was just a baby, Right? I was just a newborn believer. I was like a little lamb. And that's how everybody's going to start out. And I'm almost done here. I know I'm coming up on 30 minutes. Um, Matthew chapter 18, verse 3. And Jesus said, Verily I say unto you, Except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. See, I had, to, I, had to be, I had to come to God like a little baby. Okay, I don't know anything. I'm just a little lamb. Show me the way. I'll follow. Whatever you say. And you learn step by step in the Bible. You learn how to crawl. Then you learn how to walk. You know, and the journey doesn't stop there, friend. You know, I have to pick up my cross every single day and purge the sin out. And choose to serve God. Choose to follow the, the, the shepherd every single day. Because the lust of my flesh, it's still there. I'm still in the flesh. I still have desires. But it's my choice whether, whether or not I want to act on those desires. You know, I, I no longer have to depend on my own understanding, though. Because now I have the good shepherd to lead me to green pastures. I got the Bible. You know, so I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't have, not that I don't care what my parents say or anything, but I don't have to trust my parents. I don't have to trust what my schools teach me. I don't have to trust what my pastor at church teaches me. I can go right to the shepherd, the good shepherd and say, God, show me the way. Lead me to green pastures. Please lead me beside the still waters. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 15 says, study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You know, all I really care about is what God teaches me. And he can teach me straight up out of the Bible. John 14 verse 26 says, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things. When, when, you, when you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit answers you, and he teaches you all things. All things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. You know, that's where my peace comes from. The Lord. The Lord is my shepherd. He's all I want. And He wants you too. I promise you, He wants you too watching this video. He wants you to have eternal life. He wants you to have peace on this earth right now. But you're not going to have that unless you depend on Him. Unless you call upon the name of the Lord and be saved. You know, you keep trying to do things your way. You know, you can convince yourself that you don't need God, just like Pharaoh did in Egypt with Moses. You know, he hardened his heart. He said, I will not let my, I will not let the people, I will not let the Israelites go. And Moses said, God said, let my people go. And Pharaoh said, no, I will not. I refuse. I'm going to harden my heart. And you know, you can do that too. You can melt your conscience and believe in lies. But you know where it ended up, ended up for Pharaoh? 
He was at the bottom of the Red Sea with his whole Egyptian army. Dead. And the Israelites, what did they do? God led them to greener pastures, to the promised land. And that's where our good shepherd is. Jesus Christ will take us to the promised land. What is what is Psalm 23, 6 says? All the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You know, so I just wanted to encourage you watching this video. Put your trust in the good shepherd. Put your trust in Jesus Christ, you know. I mean, who... Who are you going to put your trust in? The good shepherd? The one who died and resurrected from the dead? Or yourself? Who you've known to have made bad decisions before in your life? Who you've, you've let yourself down? But you know who's never let me down? God. Every single time that I follow the Bible and I do what the Bible says, it always gives me peace in my heart. It never lets me down. Not even one time. It doesn't mean, like I said, it doesn't mean bad things won't happen to me, but I have peace. I have a clean conscience. And you know, I know that when I go against the commandments of God, that's when the fear comes. That's when I have something to fear. God's rod, God's staff. But when I follow the good shepherd, that it's a comfort. It means God's wrath is going to be upon my enemies and not me. You know? So... Let me tell you something, you know, I don't want this video to go too long, um, so I'm going to kind of skip this next part. I kind of already talked about uh, doing things in secret, you know, because uh, if you want to have peace in your heart, like I said, you have to start somewhere. You have to start as a child, you know, so if you're not going to church now, you're not reading your Bible, go ahead and start going. You got to start somewhere. You got it, it's okay to start at the bottom and work your way up. You know, nothing's wrong with doing that. You say, "Well, it doesn't make any sense to me to go to church, son. It doesn't but you know, God said so in the, in his word. That's what the good shepherd said. So it must be good. So even if you don't understand something that the Bible says, just do it anyway. And and, and it'll help you, you know. Maybe you Maybe it's stop drinking alcohol or stop looking at pornography or, or stop spending your money on yourself and make, give it to charity, right? You say, well, that doesn't make sense to me, Sean. Listen, just you need to choose today who you want your shepherd to be. Do you want the creator of the universe, God Almighty, to be your shepherd, the one who died for you? Or do you want to be your own shepherd? Um, that's, that's my message. The Good Shepherd, he never fails me. He's my hope. He's my peace. And that's my message for the day. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something or got encouraged. And I'm going to close in prayer. God bless. Uh, Father in heaven, I pray that you bless this message. I pray, that, I pray that your word shines through the darkness of my sinful breath. And I pray that you use me, a sinner, to edify the saints and convert the lost souls. Lord, we would be nothing without you. We would have nothing. There would be no green pastures, no still waters, if you weren't our shepherd. No everlasting life to look forward to. We thank you for your mercy upon us, Lord. We thank you for second chances, third chances. We thank you for being our good shepherd. Lord, you guide us through this valley of the shadow of death. All glory to you, Father. Thank you for this wonderful message. Your word's so comforting. It comforts me, and I hope it comforts everybody else listening. And we praise you for setting a table before us in your holy kingdom. And we thank you for forgiveness and keeping your doors open to sinners like me. Father, I pray you'll be merciful to the people who watch this video who may be too afraid or too proud or too blind to see that you are the way and the truth and the good shepherd. Please continue to bless them, show mercy upon them. Give them grace, give them a second chance. I love you, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, that's my message for the day, guys. Um, as usual, I always give God the last word. So uh, on my next live stream, I hope to see you there again. I'll see you guys in the next one. All right. Um, God's getting the last word. I'm going to read from Isaiah in the Old Testament. 
Uh, where's Isaiah? Sorry. Chapter 40, verse 28 through 31. Bible says, he giveth power to the faint. Oh, excuse me. Starting in verse 28. Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28 through uh, 31. Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary? There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might. He increases the strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with the wings as eagles. They shall run not or they shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Amen. God bless you guys. Have a good day.